Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. You know, Len, we, we look at butterflies, uh, you know, right now as we're uh, out in the uh, garden, mm-hmm. and, and, uh, and uh, especially at uh, Bloomers Summer Garden Center. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, we see swallowtails, and once in a while we're seeing monarchs. That's right. And once in a while we see those little white ones where they're not oh, butterflies. Hate, well, <laughs> the, you know, I, I guess any insect that's going to eat your plants <laughs> I guess uh, the right, how pretty they are. Oh, you know? yeah. It's Real like oh, pretty. so they're not a they're not a bad bug. But listen, <laughs> we're, we're, there, there's that white cabbage looper that yeah. I hate it because it flies over all of our our cabbage yeah. Yeah. or <laughs> collards or broccoli, and I know what the thing's doing. It's dropping the eggs right on there. So yeah. anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, people kind of look at me funny when I try to catch it and kill them. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. on the other hand, uh-huh. uh, black swallowtails, which are iridescent blue at the base, and they have they look like two little eyes. Yeah. They lay eggs on our parsley. Yeah. And because they're so beautiful, I really don't mind. And that Shirley at Bloomer, she has every year, she like has a collection of swallowtails where she plants up a half barrel full of parsley plants yeah, yeah, just meant yeah. just meant for, for the for the black swallowtail. Yeah. That's great. They're 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 beautiful. And the, that's what we see a lot of. Now yeah. also the yellow, the it's the the yellow one that, that is also it's tiger swallowtails. They are more of a, a woodland uh, pl- uh, caterpillar, so it's not gonna it's it's not necessarily gonna grow up in your garden, mm-hmm. and it looks different. Oh, I forgot to mention, yeah, the and again we talk about insects are pretty, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, all the time. That the black swallowtail or the eastern black swallowtail, that the caterpillar. All right, think I'm weird, okay? Like when there's bees do you know, working I'll take a bee and and and, and I'll run my finger down its back. You know, yeah. and that if you do that to the eastern black swallowtail, it will rear out these two orange things out of its forehead and reach back. Oh boy. And that it's a it's it thinks I'm a predator. Uh-huh. You know, or maybe just an hey. annoying garden center person, yeah. and that where it's uh, just amazing to see how it's developed <laughs> into this response <laughs> to protect itself from being eaten. Anyway, yeah. that try it sometime. You'll see what I mean. What happens, yeah. But uh, of course, I pull my finger away so it doesn't. You know, I'm, I'm not touching them <laughs> things <laughs> sticking out of its head. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but the yellows, the I'm uh, sorry, the tiger swallowtails are the yellow ones, and they get big. They can they be oh, yeah, five, six huge. inches across. Yeah, so that's a big, you know, guy. I think they're they're again they're, they're the most ornate mm-hmm. that we have. Oh, yeah. You know, but I want to move to something about uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about milkweed. Everybody, hold on. We're gonna talk about yeah, milkweed yeah, later. Right. In another segment, but we're going to talk about the monarch butterflies. Those are the brown butterflies with black markings. It is amazing. Julio and I have been talking, and, and like we've often said on the show, okay, we're we're right up there in nature. Okay, we we see God's design. Okay, yeah. it's yeah. we're there. Now, this is another example. A monarch butterfly will fly from a forest in Mexico, one forest in Mexico, and that where it will fly in, I don't know, I guess segments where where first generation gets so far, and it's heading towards the, the northern parts of the eastern part of the North America. And so it'll do a succession of these things, one each generation at a time, because they really don't live – you know that long. It's only they only live for about two to six weeks. That's it. So they're making that trek towards mm-hmm. the northeast, right? From Mexico. Wow. Now follow That's... this, folks. It's a little confusing. And every time a generation passes on, they've laid their eggs, and then the new eggs hatch, and they take the next That's journey. Generation. So it takes. Several generations to make it all the way here. And how do they know where they're going? 
Helena doesn't know. <laughs> it is it is this amazing feature. So, all right. So, say they make it all the way here. Sure. From Mexico. Right. From Mexico. Mm-hmm. And that it's several generations Next. removed. That last generation creates what's called a super generation. Now, let me quick say that you can go online and Google or search whatever you want to use and do PBS butterfly migration. And most of this information was gleaned from that little video. It's nine minutes long. And it is an amazing story. So if you have time, go ahead and check it out. But we're going to tell you what it says. So that last generation, generation leapfrogs across the continent and finally gets to the northernmost regions. Then within themselves, that last generation, a hormone is suppressed. So instead of them only living for two to six weeks, they now will live eight times longer. So when this super generation now, again, is is, yeah. is doing their thing, that, that they'll go through and that they will migrate back to Mexico. Mm-hmm. And yeah. this cycle starts all over again. The cycle starts all, all over, over again. again. And yeah. that those... Super generation are also laying eggs on their way back. On the milkweed, right? Yep, on milkweed. Yeah. On milkweed. Now you, now you jumped ahead. So milkweed is the plant that they prefer and that there are different types. We're going to get into it. We're going to get into that later. later on, yeah. We're going to get into that later. But the fact that they do all of this, you know, next time you look at a monarch butterfly, and if you see one that's really big, that's one that's on its way. Its bags are packed, and it's on its way back way to back. Mexico. Right. And it's that that one area mm-hmm. in Mexico that they all congregate. Mm-hmm. And again, they they end up when after they breed and they go through. They they do they do die, right. but then the whole thing starts all over again, and they start that they yeah. leapfrog. And how do they know where they're going? Uh, how do they know where they're going? Oh, brother. It, it it turns out that it has to do with the they're positioning moving. of the sun and their antennas, antennas yeah. <laughs> are are able to to be able to det- yeah. to compensate for time, so they make yeah. sure they're going amazing. in the same direction. Mm-hmm. It's GPS. amazing. They got GPS. Yeah, they got an internal <laughs> GPS. That's right. <laughs> you know, there's another one. If uh-huh. you see a little tiny one, like a miniature, little one, yeah. uh, a miniature monarch. Yeah. Look at the base of its of its bottom wings right past the abdomen, mm. and that you'll see that there's a line there that it cuts across. That's not a monarch; it's a viceroy, yeah, it's viceroy and that yeah. it's it's trying to live off their reputation. Oh yeah, monarchs Copycat. eat, <laughs> like you said, well, monarchs eat uh, milkweed, milkweed yeah. which makes them poisonous to predators. Mm-hmm. So predators leave them alone. Now Don't this touch me. the copycat. Gets the advantage yeah. of saying, "Oh, don't leave that!" And like, I "Fooled you! Yeah, right. You could have eaten me." Yeah, um, right. Where again, it, it's uh, it's just amazing. The whole the whole entire story is amazing. Yeah, right. and, I, and I suggest everybody go, go take a look at that uh, little video. Uh, PBS. It's uh, whether it's YouTube if you if you Google it on your search and PBS butterfly migration. It is nine minutes long. But it is powerful, powerful, yeah, powerful. Stuff. And when they're all when they're all in uh, Mexico in those trees, oh my goodness, it's, ten thousand feet up in the air. It, they're and they they're on pine trees, but yeah. because there's so many butterflies, it looks like they're on deciduous trees, like with leaves, <laughs> and that the leaves fall off. But it's really butterfly. Yeah, it's amazing. It's it's, it's an incredible oh, story. Yeah. So don't a little it. respect. That's right. A little respect for the monarch butterfly. It's That's got right. mine. Yeah, it's got mine. Yeah. And and that we're going to talk about milkweed in just a bit. Mm-hmm. Everybody should plant some in their garden. Yeah. Keep the pesticides mm-hmm. away from those because you don't want to kill any of any of the caterpillars that are on it. Um, Do you see less on your travels? Do you see less or not? I can't really say. No, I can't really say. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Yeah, um, but supposedly because of deforestation yeah. and because of um, all of the the natural, mm-hmm. like for instance. Milkweed is a weed, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, and it's sold, it's cultivated and sold now because they can make a profit off it. 
because their habitats have disappeared. I mean, it is literally a weed. Yeah. Um, but it's a fairly good looking weed, orange flower. Oh, yeah. That's another segment. So we're going to go to break and we're going to be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Do you remember seeing that tall, light green grass growing high in your yard last year in late June? That was nutsage grass. It's a weed. Nutsage is a third classification of grass. We have grasses, which comprise of plants like tall fescue, ryegrass, and bluegrass. Then the classic broadleaf weeds like dandelions, clover, and chickweed. And finally, there are sedges. These plants need a special material to be used to get rid of them in your yard. The traditional broadleaf weed control will not kill these pesky sedges. There is an answer. Fertilome's Weed Out Nutsage Control kills both yellow and purple nutsage, plus over 50 broadleaf weeds, such as dandelions, clover, chickweed, and ground ivy. Fertilome's Weed Out Nutsage Control gets absorbed by the roots and leaves, and within days, the sedges are gone. You may even reseed after four weeks of spraying the nutsedge. So when you start seeing those light green grass blades growing in your yard, use Fertilome's Weed Out Nut Sage Control to kill any nut sage threatening to invade your nice dark green grass. Neighbors Garden Center, Main Street, Hellertown, PA. Rhodes Garden, Delcab Pike, North Wales, Pennsylvania. Rourke Farm Supply, Elmer, New Jersey.